Friends, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Let us worship God. Holy God, we gather with all joy and gladness over what you have done for each and every one of us through Jesus Christ. Help us to be slow to forget the depth of your love and what that means for every single day we find ourselves alive and well. Jesus, may your goodness drive us to more goodness. May your sacrifice drive us to greater sacrifice. And may your triumph over the grave wipe away our fears and remind us of the power we have in you. We pray these things in your name with the prayer that you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The Gospel according to John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus's head. Finally, the other disciple who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back to where they were staying. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and one at the foot. They asked her, woman, why are you crying? They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. He asked her, woman, why are you crying? Who is it you're looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him and I will get him. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said, do not hold on to me for I have not yet ascended. Go instead to my brothers and sisters and tell them, I am ascending to my God and to your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news. I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And will you join me please in a word of prayer? And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock, and my Redeemer. Amen. Easter is all about fresh starts and new beginnings. Of course, thanks to the global pandemic, most of us have been pursuing fresh starts for quite some time now. Where did you seek out a restart from the day-to-day -day monotony that soon became our new normal? Was it taking walks at the beach, signing up for pickleball, knitting, boating, yoga, camping, jigsaw puzzles, paddleboarding, trying new recipes, getting out on the golf course, soaking in a hot tub, music, fishing, listening to podcasts, trying out a new hobby? I got into gardening, big time. In fact, my best gift last Christmas, a wheelbarrow. Now, it's not just your average dirt hauler, mind you. No, this, uh, this is a transformer of a wheelbarrow. It does actually eight different tasks all in one. You know, I heard so many people took up cycling this year that Cannondale, the local bike manufacturer in Wilton, saw a 50% increase in sales in every category of bike. They claim it would even been more if supply could have kept up with demand. Signs that we are itching to get out and experience something new are everywhere. Lynn came back from her morning run last Friday and she spotted something that she had never seen before. A family of five, dad, mom, three kids, lined up all in descending order, fully masks along one side of their driveway. They stood absolutely still and no one said a word. 
She said it was like a scene out of The Sound of Music. She couldn't figure it out until she got a little bit closer, and then she spotted a man crouched down in the middle of the driveway handling a tiny golden puppy. It was dog training pandemic style. Like thousands of other families who recently adopted dogs, this household found new life in a four-legged friend. I have to say, more than any spring in memory, everyone I know is itching for a taste of new life. After more than a year of distractions and restrictions and illness and devastating loss, social upheaval, political polarization, economic change, gosh, we've been at this for a long time, haven't we? So long, in fact, this is the second Easter I preached to an empty church. Last year it was empty highways, empty meeting house, empty tomb. Next year, I'm hoping against all hope, it'll be everyone back together in church. A church that's finished and full. Meanwhile, today, we're hungry for a reset, a fresh start, a new way of life. Or are we? A recent study of U.S. employees found two-thirds are feeling anxious about returning to the physical workplace. And 47% say they're likely to leave their job if it doesn't offer a hybrid work model when the pandemic ends. Sarah Hart says trepidation over returning to the office is normal, as most of us resist change of any kind. Sometimes change seems like it'll be good for us, but other times we're not so sure. I heard a podcast recently about fresh starts. Researchers wanted to know when a research helps us to do better and when it doesn't. And they found the perfect real-life case study example in, of all places, Major League Baseball. In baseball, players in both leagues get traded regularly throughout the season. And when players are traded across leagues, say from the American League to the National League or vice versa, the statistics, the player statistics, reset. Batting averages go back to zero and the players start over. But when they're traded within the same league, they hold on to their statistics and keep playing from where they left off. So, what did researchers discover? Well, they looked at a whole lot of data. They ran statistics from 1975 to 2014, including over 700 trades and, and more than 250,000 at-bats. And, and they were able to control for all kinds of different factors, like whether the new park figure, favored Pitchers or hitters? The overall performance of the new team? The differences between the two leagues? They even looked at the point in the season when the player got traded. And still, after taking all of that and more into account, the data remained absolutely consistent. When players were doing poorly, the trade was helpful. They welcomed the change as a fresh start, a new opportunity, and most played better. But those who were already playing well, it was more of a disruption than a reset. Performances tended to decline. Batting averages dipped. 
not everyone is ready for a fresh start. That's true in baseball. It's true in the workplace. And it's also true in a life of faith. In the story Dave and Becky just read, Mary begins Easter morning outside the tomb in tears. The changes of the past few days are just simply too much to take in. But when the risen Christ calls her by name, she recognizes him, calls him teacher. Jesus is the one who teaches Mary and you and I about the reset, the new beginning God set in motion that first Easter. You know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Organizational change expert William Bridges says that every new beginning starts with an ending. Unlike most stories, change doesn't go beginning, middle, end, as we've been taught. It's actually reversed. And try and skip over the end, the old and familiar, the dead of life of, as we've known it, and go straight into something shiny, new, and improved. And guess what? It'll never happen. The fresh start just won't take. Sometimes I wonder if Mary was the first to recognize the resurrection, God's new beginning, because she stuck with the ending. Instead of taking off with the other disciples who were there, she stayed at the tomb to mourn a loss she couldn't comprehend. Jesus was dead, his body gone. And she knew there was nothing she could do about it. Not even give him a proper burial. So she sat there, surrendered herself to that dead end moment. When you think about it, Easter ends any fantasy we might have that we can control, prevent, or manage life's endings. And biggest among them, the distance, the loss of connection between us and God. All our efforts to make God love us, to earn God's favor, approval, security, and success only pulls us further and further away from seeing and knowing God for who God really is. Because faith isn't something we do. It's about what God does. That's why Paul was so upset with the Galatians, right? I am astounded, he writes. Over and over, we looked at it these past few weeks of Lent. Paul was upset because... The Galatians wanted to go back to believing that they could somehow earn God's grace by following the rules, crossing T's and dotting I's, trying to make a fresh start about us and what we do instead of seeing it about God and what God does. Eugene Peterson puts it this way, Christian maturity isn't a matter of doing more for God. It is God doing more in and through us. Faith is the key. Faith is what enables us to go to the last place on earth we want to go. Faith is what helps us to let go of the myths we tell ourselves. It's what empowers us to leave behind the do-it-yourself, self-help, take charge of the situation story so we can actually go to the place where we have to face what we cannot face on our own. Our empty tomb, our 
dead end. Faith allows us to hope that even when we can't seem to manage to make change happen, can't will our dreams, our desires into existence, God loves us beyond imagination, beyond failure and grief and loss. Late last summer, our family was in the thick of a dead end. As you know, our 29-year-old daughter, Abby, was in the hospital where she was allowed just one visitor per day. She faced daily tests in search of a diagnosis. As doctors prepared us for the worst, I opened my email one morning <laughs> only to discover an offer for 100 mixed daffodil bulbs from White Flower Farm. And I thought to myself, there is nothing I can do to change this outcome. But whatever happens, there could be flowers this spring. And so I ordered the bulbs. Abby, as you know, was diagnosed with cancer. And in between trips into the city for treatment and working remotely, we managed to get all 100 into the ground before the first frost. 100 <laughs> is a lot more than I thought it was. <laughs> but you know what? You don't plant something unless you believe it's going to come up. It's been a long winter. Abby is done with treatment, getting stronger every day, for which we are so very grateful. We understand not every story goes that way. Sometimes it's a different ending. But wouldn't you know it, the first of 100 daffodils bloomed at the parsonage last week, Holy Week. Bursts of bright yellow popping up against that gray stone wall, bobbing in the wind. Friends, God is the maker of life after death. Life out of death. You and I, we hit the end of the road, dead ends that we have no control over. But God does something new. Something he wants us to be part of. And that is... Absolutely. Take your breath away. Wonderful. Good news. Will you pray with me? God, give us the courage to go to the place we don't want to go. To start with our ending. Whisper to us news of a fresh start, a new story. Fill us with wonder at the new life you bring out of death and dead ends. For you, Lord, are absolutely amazing. Amen. And now... May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit 
be with us all now and always. Amen and amen.